Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how we can upload firmware into the STM32 ARM microcontroller. Now, when you write code in a language of your choice and then generate a hex file, now you have to take that hex file and upload it into the flash memory of your microcontroller for your program to run. So on power up, your program will run. So we're going to use STM's discovery board, which you can see here. Now this discovery board contains the STM32F407 ARM microcontroller. And what I've done, I've built some adapters from uh, some IDC headers and some ribbon cable. And I connected them to the both buses of the discovery board on both sides. So now I, I can break out any of the pins on the board onto my breadboard for experimentation. So you can see here I brought out the power supply plus 5 volts and ground and I brought out two USARTs, two RS-232 ports. So this is USART 1 and this is USART 3. So now we can gain access to the serial port through a module like this. This is a USB to serial FTDI so I could plug that in here to access uh, USART 1 or USART 3. Now I could also go wirelessly and I could actually plug in HC06 Bluetooth module and then gain the access uh, wirelessly through Bluetooth into the USART 1 or USART 3. Now there's three ways in which we could upload firmware into the STM32R microcontroller and we're going to look at those three ways because there's actually three bootloaders on board, on board the microcontroller and we could use three different pieces of software to load three different ways our hex file into the microcontroller. Now the first way we're going to use ST-Link which we're going to use this circuitry here on the, on the discovery board which has a, its own built-in ST-Link programmer and it uses SWD, that's Serial Wire Debug and that's the pins here. So this is like a new version of JTAG. So this uh, USB connector powers up the board and we could actually program the, the flash memory of the microcontroller through this ST-Link interface. Now if you're building a, your own uh, product and, um, and you want to be able to program your your microcontroller or your customer wants to program the microcontroller, he has to buy an ST-Link programmer which you could buy from STM uh, Microelectronics or you could actually get uh, third-party dongles and you could program uh, the microcontroller using the dongle. The second way of programming the microcontroller is through the, through the serial port so it's a serial flash loader and we're going to use USART 3 and we're going to use uh, a USB to serial FTDI module like this one here to upload the, the hex file into the microcontroller through the serial port. And the last way is to use the USB connector on the bottom here. And we're going to use uh, DFUSE, DFU, Device for a Firmware Upgrade, which uses a USB connector uh, to upload the hex file into the microcontroller. Now to do this, we have to take the hex file and convert it into a DFU file and then run uh, special software that will upload that DFU file into the microcontroller. So there's three ways in which we could upload firmware into uh, the STM32R microcontroller and we're actually going to look at all three ways. Okay, I have my ST-Link utility up and running on my computer. Now this is the free download from ST Microelectronics. And I have my discovery board plugged into my USB port on my computer which is powering up the board. It's also connected to the ST-Link software. So now we have to connect to the board, to the discovery board. So we go up to target and select connect. See it's connected to the board. If you look down at the output screen, you can see uh, connected via S SWD. That's our serial wire debug. So everything looks okay. So we're connected to the board. So now if I go up to target and I go down to program and verify, and there's the hex file I'm going to load. It's called ARM fourth hex. That's my fourth operating system. So you just have to browse on your computer you, with the browse button here and you could browse to wherever your hex file is on your computer and then it will enter that into this, uh, into this text box. All you have to do is hit start for programming and I've checked reset after program so my program will actually run after it's programmed. It will actually uh, generate a reset and run my program. So if I hit start, it's programming uh, the memory. If you look down at the bottom, it says uh, flash memory is programmed and the verification is OK. So now my hex file is loaded into the flash memory on my discovery board on my STM32F407 microcontroller and it's up and running. OK, I have my program up and running on my discovery board. So this is the hex file that I uploaded into the microcontroller using ST-Link utility. 
And I can tell it's up and running because the four user LEDs on the discovery board are on, which is enabled by my code on PowerUp. Also, I have an HC06 Bluetooth module plugged into USART 1 of the discovery board, and I can control my LEDs through the Bluetooth module. I have it paired to my smartphone. So I can turn the LEDs on and off. See there. So now I know my program is, is up and running. It's running properly. So next, we're going to look at how we can program the same hex file into the microcontroller using the serial port. So you can see here, I have, a, I have a USB to serial FTDI module plugged into USART 3 on the discovery board. And we'll load that same hex file through the serial port into the microcontroller. Okay, I have my flash loader demonstrator software running on my computer. So this is the serial flash loader and it's a free download. And I have my discovery board powered up by my USB cable. And I have my USB to serial FTDI module plugged into USART 3 on the discovery board. And that's also plugged into my computer. Now to activate the bootloader, the serial bootloader on the microcontroller, we have to tie the boot zero pin on the microcontroller high. And after we do that, we hit the reset button and the bootloader will look for an active serial port and it will detect a USART 3 because we're, we have that plugged in to the FTDI module. So I have the jumper on my boot zero and I hit the reset button. So now if I go to the port name, that's my COM24, that's my uh, FTDI module. So I'll select that and I'll go to next. And it says target is readable. So it's actually seeing my, uh, my FTDI module plugged into my, into my uh, USB uh, connection on my computer. So if you go to next, you can see the target. It, it's actually uh, discovered STM32F407. So it actually sees the microcontroller. So we go to next. And we can uh, select download to device. And then we can browse for our hex file. And so we'll go to, it's going to be a dot hex file. And there's my hex file, arm 4 hex. So I'll select it and hit open. So now let's enter that into this text box. So now if we go down to next, and she starts programming the microcontroller. So now it's downloading the, my hex file through the serial port, through USART 3, into the microcontroller. And we get a download operation finished successfully. So now we've loaded the hex file into the microcontroller. And all I have to do now is pull out the boot zero pin jumper and hit the reset button. And my program runs. Okay, my program is up and running on my discovery board. You can see the four user LEDs are on, indicating my program is running. So this is the program we just uploaded through the serial port through USART 3 using the serial flash loader. Now if I hit the reset button, you can see every time I hit it, it boots up my program because the, the LEDs come on. Now to put it into boot load, we have to put a jumper on boot zero. We have to pull that high to FDD. So if you look on the back of the discovery board, there's actually two spare jumpers that we could use. So we could pull one of them off. And then we jumper it on, on the board here from boot zero to VDD. So now when we hit the reset button, you see the LEDs don't come on. So my program isn't running. It's, it's actually in bootload mode. And it's looking for a, it's looking for a, a serial port. In our case, uh, USART 3. So that's how we activate the bootloader before we program the hex file. So next we're going to look at how we can program through the USB port using DFUSE, DFU, Device Firmware Upgrade. And that's the last way that we can program a hex file onto a, onto a STM32 microcontroller. Okay, if you want to upload your hex file into the microcontroller using a USB connection and the DFUSE utility, we first have to convert the .hex file into a .dfu file before we can upload it through the USB port. Now to do that, we run the DFU file manager and we select we want to create a DFU file from a hex file and we'll get this dialog box here. Then we select S19 or hex and we browse for, for our .hex file and here it is, arm fourth hex. And so you select it, hit open. Now we hit the, the generate button and that will generate a .dfu file from the hex file. So we hit generate. Now we enter the name of our, our new .dfu file. And 
hit save. So now we have a DFU file from our hex file that we could use to upload into our microcontroller. Okay, here's my setup to upload a DFU file into the microcontroller. Now the discovery board is being powered by this USB uh, connection here. It's getting its 5 volts uh, to power the board. And this is the USB connector that's actually going to be feeding the DFU file into the microcontroller. So I have the boot zero pin jumpered over to the VDD, so it's, it's jumpered high with my jumper here. So all I have to do is hit the reset button and it will put it into the DFU bootloader mode. And then I can upload the DFU file through the USB port. So I'll run the software and I'll hit the reset button, put it into DFU mode, and it will upload the DFU file into the microcontroller. Okay, I got my DFUSE demo software running on my computer. And if you look up at the top, you see available DFU devices. There's nothing in the box there because I have to hit my reset button with my boot zero pin tied high to put it into the DFU bootloader mode. So I'll hit my reset button. And you see up top, it sees this STM device in DF, DFU mode. So now it sees the microcontroller. And if we go down to the upgrade or verify action, and we select choose and we'll select our our DFU file which is armforth.dfu we'll select it and then we'll hit upgrade and hit yes look at the very bottom it's upgrading and I get my upgrade successful okay as you can see I removed my boot zero jumper and I hit my reset button now my program is running that's the program that I uploaded my DFU file into uh, the microcontroller. So that's three ways in which you could program an STM32 microcontroller. So you pick the one that's easiest for you to upload your hex file into your microcontroller.